God bless you, you, and especially you, it's Apostle Barry Spates. I want to take the time to thank you so much for listening to this pre-recorded uh, message, God Will Comfort Zion, coming out of Isaiah, uh, the 51st chapter, uh, beginning with just a few verses there in Isaiah 51, knowing that whatever it is that you're experiencing and whatever you're going through, know that God will comfort you in the midst of whatever you may be facing in this time and in this season. Now, let us pray. Now, Father, we bless, we glorify, we adore, we esteem you now. We thank you, Father, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We ask you right now just to release a fresh anointing. Even over your word right now, we repent of all sin, all iniquity, all ungodliness, and all unholiness. We bind Satan and every spirit of the enemy that would keep you from getting all the glory. But, Father, we ask you to anoint this word for these, your people, that you'll be glorified edified and exalted and it is in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen and as i said this is a pre-recorded message so i just pray that this this message bless you now god bless you you and especially you as you listen to this word Said, but let me pray first. Now, Father, we give you glory out and praise. We thank you for the word. We bless you and adore you. We esteem you on high. We ask you right now to take this, this word today and anoint it for your kingdom and for your glory. Open the hearts and the minds of everyone on the side of the voice. Now, Holy Spirit, hide me behind you. You take the lead and now follow. You're my spirit, my soul, my mind, and my body unto you. In Jesus' name, they want it. Amen. Amen. Let me read a couple of scriptures for you, a couple of verses that they need to be seated. Look at chapter uh, 51 and verse number 7 in Isaiah. 51 and verse number 7. It says, Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness. The people in whose heart is what? My law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, and neither be ye afraid of their what? Rebellion. It says, For the mouth shall eat them up like what? A garment. And the worm shall eat them like what? War. But my righteousness shall be for what? Ever. And my salvation for what? Generation to generation. Look at this next verse. Awake, awake. Put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days, and the generations of old. Art thou not it that have cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Art thou not it which have Dry the sea, the waters of the great deep, that have made the death of the sea a way of ransom to pass what? Over? Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with the singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their what? Head. And they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow for mourning shall what? Flee away. And then you may be seated. And for those of you that are taking notes, comfort in Zion. Now, I was about to say just before I started, you know, we give glory, we give praise, we give honor, we magnify, we edify, we exalt the Lord, we give Him glory. And I didn't say this when I was teaching last week, but I need to say it. And I, my apostle Thomas brought it to my attention. I've been teaching for a long time, and I haven't really put this in the atmosphere pertaining to the Lord. But when we give glory and honor and praise to the Lord, we give glory and honor and praise to the Holy Spirit. 
Because the Holy Spirit in the earth is the Lord. Why is that? Because he's the Lord of the earth. He's the Lord of the earth. When Jesus died, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then the word says, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. So it means the Holy Spirit is now Lord of everything, which means it comes, what we get from God comes through Jesus Christ, but the Holy Spirit makes the request. So it's the Holy Spirit that we worship, it's the Holy Spirit that we praise, it's the Holy Spirit that we magnify, edify, and exalt it, and from there we go forward. The Holy Spirit makes intercession for us, according to Romans 8 chapter, with groans and words he not want to utter. And when he does that, that's what happens. He takes it back to the Father, and I guess this now, and I say this many times, the Holy Spirit can only take the Father his will. He won't take it your will. He won't take it what you want. He will only take the Father what he will for your life. So that means when you are totally healed, when you're totally surrendered, your spirit, your soul, your mind, and your body, and you begin to pray, then the will of the Lord can come into your spirit. Then when the will of the Lord comes into your spirit, guess what? The Holy Spirit begins to intercede. Lord, they're ready now. Father, they, uh, they're praying your will now. So, so what's your will? Go, go, go tell them that, that I say. So when the Holy Spirit goes to Jesus, he says, they're praying the will of the Father now. Amen. Amen. I don't want to cut that. I just want to throw that out there to you. Now, look at verse number 7 in Isaiah. We want to get in the comforter. Now, we know the Holy Spirit is the comforter. Jesus speaks and he lets us know in it that there is a comforter in certain passages of Scripture. The Bible says that after the, after the power has come upon you, you shall, after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power of correction. Now, guess this now. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you see what I'm going in just a minute, so bear with me. Look at what Isaiah says in verse number, chapter 51 and verse number 7. He says, Hoken unto me, or listen unto me, or pay close attention to me, ye that know righteousness. In the first verse, or uh, above that, he talks about ye that follow after righteousness. Now, those who are seeking the Lord is the ones he speaks to first. But now in this verse, he's not, he's not speaking to those who are seeking righteousness. Uh, he's speaking to those who what? Who know K-N-O-W. That means you're aware of. That means you have an understanding. So, so now I'm talking to you that know righteousness. The people in whose heart is my law. So now Isaiah shifts it as he prophesies. And he takes it from those who are seeking God to those who have a relationship. To those who have knowledge and understand God. And he, he says, now you listen. Because now I'm going to release to you a greater measure. See, one of the things you have to understand about the prophet is the prophet has the authority to release in many measures of kingdom. He can release greater, and he can release greater and greater and greater as the Holy Spirit what? gives him others. So it's the Holy Spirit, as I said last week, the, 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 the prophetic word is subject to who? It's subject to the prophet. So Isaiah prophesies, and I told you earlier, he was prophesying purpose and destiny. He was prophesying the will of God, not just present, but the will of God, period. And look at that. Look at verse, just go up above seven to the last, the last paragraph in verse number six. It says, but my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not what? Be abolished. So God says in that verse, the prophet Isaiah prophesies, and he says, now, God is speaking, and he says, now, God says, my righteousness shall be forever, and it shall not be abolished. That means that you pay in it. That means that it will never vanish away. That means it doesn't matter what happens, it will stand permanently. Now let's look back in verse number seven again. It says, the people in whose, second paragraph, or second verse, says the people in whose heart is my what? Law. Now notice something. The law of God is the rule of God. The law of God is required of every believer. Moses, when he went, went up to the mountain to talk God in the presence of God, the word says that the Lord gave Moses a law for the children of Israel. While they were in the wilderness. And one of the things that God, and one of the reasons was because they were breaking every rule and every law they could not notice what Moses did. Moses didn't go and create laws within himself. But he got in the presence of God. And he waited on God to write the laws with his finger. And the word says that Moses, the, says, the word says that the Lord wrote the law on a tablet with his finger. And gave them to Moses. And when Moses returned to the camp after being gone in the presence of the Lord, on his way down, he met uh, 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 Caleb. Joshua, one of Caleb or Joshua. And the word says that when he met them, 
they, they were talking about the laws and, and, and everything that was going on. And Moses told him, he said, uh, he said, that's not praise and worship. And I'm paraphrasing. He said, that's a sign of sin. Because while he was in the presence of the Lord, the Lord told Moses, he said, you go out there to your people. See, <laughs> see at that moment, God disowned them. Because they were doing what? They were being foolish. And they had convinced Abra to build a calf, a golden calf, which was an idol, idol god. And God says, I have no other gods before me. One of the first commandments he made, he wrote was, thou shalt have no other gods before me. If you don't take commandments, that's the very first one. Thou shalt have no other god besides me. And I'm paraphrasing. And in other words, he said, I am the God. I'm the only one. There is no other. Now, you want power, you want authority, you want to form the realms of kingdom and authority, get, get rid of all your other gods. I said, I don't, I don't really worship no other God. Really. But well, we're going to see here in a minute if you do. Now, so it says in this verse, he says, you that, that, that your heart is for my law. And I'm going to paraphrase it. So now, your spirit is your heart. So your spirit totally surrenders to the will of God. It is your spirit that he speaks about. He's not talking about that piece of meat to be in your heart. But is your spirit in tune with the Holy Ghost? Is your spirit in tune with who I am? And if your spirit is in tune with Jesus Christ, remember now, kiss this now. Remember I said when you repent, God gives you what? He gives you a new spirit. See, because your old spirit is the spirit that, that you received when you were born. But see, when God gives you the new spirit, when remember Apostle Paul said, old things are passed away. Behold, all has become new. So that means even there's a spiritual transformation. Remember it says, we're transferred by the renewing of our mind. Our mind is the eye of who we are. Our mind is also the eye of Christ whenever we die. Now, I didn't say die physically, but I'm talking about dying, dying, dying to the things of the world and gaining life. In other words, dying to sin and then resurrecting to life eternal. <laughs> then the mind of God, the eye of God can come in. Because see, when God gives you his mind, you begin to see spiritually. Uh oh. See, your your spiritual eye is closed until you die. Yeah. Now you and I feel super saying that's a different story because you got a spiritual eye of something, but it ain't the eye of God. Amen. That's the eye of the devil. That's right. See, he was remember, yeah, remember he was an angel too. His name is Lucifer. That's right. He fell out of heaven. So see, he's the prince of the air. And this is the only kingdom that he'll ever know. So he's using a lot of folk. That's true. Paul Reader, Super Sailor. Whatever your, your 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 favorite thing is. But now let's read on the phone. Now says now. So the spirit, he now he when 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 Isaiah prophesies here, he talks about the very spirit of who you are that knows the law of God. Then he says, now see if you know the law of God, you can always obey the law of God. Then he says, fear ye not the reproach of men. So he he gives them encouragement. He says, You know the law, so why are you afraid? See, he said, don't be afraid. Don't fear, though. Don't fear. Because guess what? God has you. I remember woman of God told a woman of God in here yesterday. She said, God got you. So he says that by in this verse, he says, don't fear the reproach. So that means when you stand for what's right, don't worry about the fact that the enemy comes at you. Don't worry about the fact that Satan is going to come at you because you're standing firm for what you know is right. Because if you stand for the truth, the devil will be defeated. He says, neither be afraid of their revival. So now, he lets them know in this particular passage of scripture that because you're righteous, those that are sinners are coming at you. But even though they come at you fussing and arguing and raising sand, you stand firm. Amen. Even though they come at you with ungodly thoughts and, and, and casting their imaginations. Because see, let me tell you something. The imagination is mine. The, man, the mind of man is no comparison to the thoughts in the mind of God. So we're backing from a, from a lower level and a lower measure, unless you enter into the kingdom. Amen. See, when you enter into the kingdom, then God gives you scrolls and mysteries and revelations. He gives you things, you're like, wow, where did you get that from? Wow, I've been reading that for 50 years and I never saw it. You never saw it because you haven't entered into the kingdom. But when you enter into the place of God, somebody said, well, Pastor, I, how do I get into the kingdom? I don't know how to get into the kingdom. And you need to read the third chapter of, uh, of uh, St. John all over again. Because it says, you must be born again. Then once you're born again, it says you must be baptized. And it says if you're not born again and baptized, it says, first of all, you cannot see. 
the kingdom of God. So you're blind spiritually. You, you can see everything physically, but you're blind spiritually. Then it says in the next part of that verse, it says, now, if you if you're born again and you baptize, it says you can what? You can enter in. So see, there's a massive kingdom that we can enter in the presence of God. And when we enter in, then God can endow us with power. He can endow us with authority. He can anoint us with the fire of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why can he do that? Because I died. Because you died. And because you're not seeking materialistic things, but you're seeking the things of the kingdom. You're seeking the things of God. And as a result of that, God can increase you. He can enlarge you. He can expand you. But that's what it says in the next verse. It says now, he says now, he likes to know in this verse what will really happen in the prophetic word. He says, for the moth shall eat them up like a garment. Yes. Why are you worried about them? Because the moth will take care of them. He says, the moth going to eat them up like a garment. This time he's still prophesying. He says, and the worm shall eat them like wool. See, a lot of folks don't understand that. Let me take you back into the in the 60s. So you have a better understanding. In the early 60s, before they came out with medicine, they, you could you could uh, digest worms and pass them. A lot of worms would live in your body. Some of you young folks don't know about that because they got medicine now that they, they, you don't have to worry about it. But when we use kids coming up, worms lived inside of you. And they stayed in you unless your mom gave you a certain type of medicine to pass them. Yes. They lived inside your body. And so it's gross, but it's a fact. It's true. It's a fact. They lived inside of you. That's why people order with serpents and scorpions and snakes. All right, guys. Seed and root and the fruit of the enemy. And they live inside of them because they don't know those spirits have to be resisted. That's right, man. They don't know those spirits have to be cast out. They say, girl, I'm looking inside of you. You're just full of snakes. And ain't no snake in there. Yes, it is. I know my, my spiritual eye don't lie. I know what I see. Amen. Amen. You just don't know it's there. So what did you do to invite him in? Because he, he didn't come in on his own. You, you, and you opened the door. Yes. You invited the enemy in. But that's a lesson for another time. Let's get back on the prophetic word for now. And notice what he says in this verse. He lets them know, first of all, he encourages them. Then he lets them know what's going to happen to their enemies. See? The prophet prophesies that God himself is going to take care of you. And he lets them know that in the process of God taking care of you, he's going to take care of your enemies. Amen. Your enemies are no match for God. Right. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In other words, it does not matter what the adversary says. It does not matter how the enemy comes at you. The power of Jesus Christ living on the inside of you is greater than any power known to to man. That's why he says, I'll magnify inside of you. I'll be greater and greater and greater and greater and greater and greater. You know how you get greater and greater? You go higher and higher and higher and higher in praise and higher and higher and higher in worship and just what he does. He expands and he grows and all of a sudden the anointing begins to flow over you and it fills the atmosphere. Hallelujah. God says, I'm so big inside of you, I gotta share it. For we said in terms of like, oh my God, the anointing. Where did it come from? It comes from the Holy Ghost. Yes. It comes from Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's God all by himself. And he says, I will increase what I choose. And he says, I expect you to increase. I expect you to multiply. And guess what? You can't multiply till you die. Because see, God multiplies within us. He's the one that does the work. That was free. I won't charge you nothing for it. And notice this. He says now, in this particular verse, he says now God's going to eat them up like a worm. But he says, but my righteousness shall be for them. So he says now, now, now he ain't talking to the people playing church. He's talking to the people that know who he is. In other words, he said, what I put in you don't last eternally. It ain't going nowhere. It's forever and ever 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 and ever. So what he put inside you stays. What he put inside.
is why he will remain. Why? Because he's come on by himself. That's what he says in the next verse. He says, and my salvation from generation to generation. Yeah. Now, now, the prophet is prophesying yeah. Jesus Christ. He's prophesying that when Jesus dies, it's going to be forever. He's prophesying that salvation, when Jesus died and raised and rise up again, he says, my salvation is going to be forever, ever, 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 ever. Yeah. And ain't, ain't going to be nothing so they can do about it because God tricks Satan. Yeah. Yeah. He deceives Satan. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I got to go around the earth and do this myself. Yeah. Yeah. So he got the son. Jesus said, well, Father, I don't know if you go with me. I'm paraphrasing. He reaches the ground to get him. He says, let me find somebody worthy to put you in. Let me find somebody worthy to put you inside of. Oh, man. Jesus. The day you're chosen. The Bible says the angel gave all those to make Mary. I think it's gave Yeah, because Michael is the walking. Goes to Mary, and when he goes to Mary, he says, This day thou hast been chosen. You're going to bear a son. She said, How am I going to bear a son? I never know the man. I never had a relationship. He said, The Holy Spirit going to release him, and he's going to leave in your womb. And that's what he says. So Jesus comes on the scene. Through the prophetic word in Isaiah also. He's prophesying what is to come. But he's letting the children of Israel know not only will God battle on your behalf, not only will God destroy the enemy on your behalf, but he's going to fix it with the enemy won't have no more power if you accept him. He's going to fix it with the enemy won't have no more authority if you accept him. Look at the next verse. It says from generation to generation. That means mama's children's 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 why? Because three scores and ten and eight by screen. All right. That's the word of God. And that's where it says, awake, verse number nine. It says, awake, awake. And put on what? Strength. Oh, all I'm going to like this is now. The prophet prophesied, he said, now don't you know you're the arm of God? He says, you are the arm of God. He says, why are you sleeping? Do you realize who you really are? Awake means to get up from being lazy. Yes, yes. And I ain't talking about you sleeping in no bed. It means to get up and be about your father's business. Right. It means to get up and get glory. It means to get up and get on. It means to get up and get praise. It means to get in the presence of God so he can do what he needs to do. He says, man, put on strength. The only way you're going to get strength, you got to get in God's presence. Yes. Hallelujah. People want God to move every day, but they won't get in his presence and say thank you. Glory. Jesus. Man, I, I, and get on their knees, Lord. If I get down there, I can't get up. But don't you roll over out of the bed? Roll over on the floor and get on your knees. Now these small like a boss will get you some good pillows. Get you some real good pillows. Get you, get, let me see that pillow right there. Come here, man, God, right quick. Come here. Kneel on that pillow. Tell me how they feel. That's that. You pray with it. You pray with that for hours. Because that ain't going to bother your knees. Get you some good pillows. Yeah. Don't go, go get them ones in the day. You need some stuff with feathers. Something that's going to be, that's going to support your knees. Because the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess what? And I want you to start to buy it though. And the man looked at me said, how many do you need? I said, one. He said, take it. Hallelujah. See, when you're on a mission for God, yeah. he'll give you what you need. Yeah. I ain't pay a cent for it. That pill will sell for $25, $30. Yeah. He charged me once and he said, take it. Praise God. See, that's God. I said, I need a pillow. I didn't even tell him what I wanted it for. 
And he said, hey, that's God. I said, well, let me release on you. Bam. Since you give it to me, let me bless the soul. That's how the soul gets blessed. That's how you get blessed. When you give, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen? Back to the lesson. Now notice, he lets you know in this particular passage, church, as I talked about awake, awake. He says, put on the strength of arm of the Lord. Now notice what he says. Now we know the Lord is God. But we also know the Lord is Jehovah. But we also know the Lord is the Holy Spirit. So he said, now wait a minute. He says, now you put on the strength of arm of the Lord. And notice what he says in the next verse. He says it again. Awake as in the day, uh, as in the what? Ancient of days. Do you know what the ancient of days is? That's God all by himself. That's God on the throne. That's the ancient of days. That's who the ancient of days is. Go back and study the history. It's God Almighty. He says, look, he says, you got to wake up like it was in the day of the Lord. When, when God was worshipped, when God was glorified, when God was magnified in the ancient of days, he says, you got to wake up to that measure. So he tells them, he gives them a measure that they need to wake up to. You don't just say, wake up. But he says, you got to go back to the Father on the throne. You got to worship God. He lets them know, you got to get back to the presence of God. That's what your strength is. Yeah, Those of you that's wondering why you ain't got no anointing, why you ain't got no power, why you ain't got no authority, it's because you got to go back into the presence of God. It says, old oh, ancient of days. Then he says, in the generation of old. So it talks about the generations of the past. Now he's still prophesying. He says, I'm not not it. That cup Rahab. Right and the woman the dragon. Now, wait a minute now. See, Rahab, a lot of people talk about Rahab, and they always talk about what Rahab did for the two, two, two spies, Joshua and Caleb, whoever they were. They always talk about the two spies that she put on her room. But Rahab was a prostitute. You go back and read the history. That's, that was her lifestyle. That's what she needed. But God wounded that spirit in her. He said, I killed the dragon. In other words, that spirit that dominated her, that spirit that controlled her, he said, I killed that spirit. Because she had an assignment. As the only way a whole house could be saved was the word says she had to bring her all to her residence. Because everything else in the city was going to be destroyed. Yes. Everything was going to be destroyed. And the men of God told her, said, if you want to be saved, you better put some scarlet in your window and everybody in your family better be in your house. Because if they're anywhere else in Jericho, they're going to die today. If they're going to die, at least you will. The, 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 that saying goes, you're going to learn today. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to die today. If you're not in the place you're supposed to be. <laughs> See, he was prophesying. And he talked about Rahab. And he talked about the devil. Now, no, 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 wait a minute now. Now, I don't want you to think it was just Rahab that got killed. Because he took the city. That's true. When, that, when, when Joshua and Caleb and the children of Israel came in, God put the whole, he killed the whole spirit. Everything in that city that was not godly, he took it. That's true. So he took the authority from Satan. He took the power from the enemy when they entered into the city. And that is something. If God is going before you, you, you can't be defeated. You already got victory. So what are you afraid of? He's already leading you. He's already guiding you so you don't have to fear any man. Guess what? The Holy Spirit will teach you to fear no man. No man. Because the Holy Spirit in you is greater than any spirit. And if somebody was in church yesterday, you would have saw it. When the power of God fell in, he moved miraculously. Amen. Amen. All the devil hit a man sitting back in that seat, in that back seat, back there, knocked him clean on the floor. Wow. He fell as dead. Mm. That's how hard he hit the floor. Jesus. He hit the floor so hard he had a knot on the side of his head, didn't he? Yeah. I ain't talking no small one either. I'm talking a big one. And guess what God did? He put him in perfect condition by the time he gave this guy in. Yes. He said, he this. Did I say that? Yeah. By the time they got him. They couldn't find nothing wrong with that man. No. They checked every spinal sign. They checked his blood sugar. They checked everything. I mean, they pricked his finger, checked his blood. They checked his paws. 
They check the strength of his legs. They check everything. And they look at him and say, you in better condition than I am. <laughs> but God. But God. But the power and the authority of God. Now, we have a devil in here on the side. I ain't talking about the person, but I'm talking about the spirit of operation. But you got to know your place. And you got to know who you are in God. This is your house. And you're responsible for what goes on in your house. That's true. And you're responsible for what goes on in the house of the Lord. You take authority, leaders, in your ministry. Because God gave you the authority. No devil from the pits of hell have the authority. I don't care how much they can pray. I don't care how much they can speak in tongues. God gives the overseer of the ministry the authority. Everybody else is the overseer. Everybody else. Because guess who God will hold accountable? Only the overseer. Yeah, right. <laughs> Look at what God, what God do when, when God came, the voice of God came walking in the garden eating in the breeze of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Adam, where are that? Lord, I heard you coming and I hid myself. Because I was naked. And I'm paraphrasing. God said, who told you he was naked? That 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 that, that woman <laughs> beguiled me, deceived me, tricked me. And see, God said, "Well, I, I I didn't tell the woman. I told you before I ever made the woman. You made it with it. Before God ever made Eve, He told Adam, the day that you eat of the tree of life or the tree of knowledge." You shall surely die. Before he ever reached in that, before he ever put him to sleep, right. he told him. Yes, he did. He said, if you eat off this tree, you're going to die. In other words, there will be a separation between you and me. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. Because he came to reconnect us. <laughs> he sat down for far two generations so we would have a relationship with the Father. That was his purpose. That's why he came to the earth. So we could be reconnected back to God. Because the enemy had separated us. God says, I, I, I got to go down there as I said earlier and do it myself. Because they don't understand it takes love to get in this bed, in this ramp. Now, no, 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 we got to finish this. We got to go home. Now, no, 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 what it says in this next verse. So he says, I destroyed the city. He's prophesying now. And he looked at this verse, verse 10. He says, I thou not. It which had dried the sea, the waters of the deep, my whole way back, and have made the death, the path of the sea, a way of what? Ransom. A way of escape. That's what Jesus came to be. That's what the word ransom means. It means it is a way of escape. It is a way for you to get back. It is a way for you to get through. Jesus became the way that we can get to the Father. He became the ransom. And when he became the ransom, now we can enter in through him back to the Father. Why? Because his blood was pure enough. His blood was holy enough. His blood was righteous enough to be sacrificed. And as a result of that, now we can go back to the Father and we can say, in the name of Jesus Christ. And guess what? There's power and there's authority. And so, now notice what he says. He says, now, I want you to understand. And, I, and, I, and notice what Isaiah does. He, he reminds them of what God had already done. That's what he's doing here. He's reminding them, God is speaking, and he's reminding them what I'm going to do. See, sometimes when you get in situations, you need to be reminded of what God has already done. That's right. When you start talking about walking away from God, well, I ain't certain God, because he, he won't do something. Like, say, wait a minute, what, what about this? What about when you pray for your child and I'm saved then? What about when you pray for your alcoholic husband and your drug addict son and I'm saved then? What about, what about that? You're going to leave an hour after I've done all this? You're you, you going to walk away from your promises and your inheritance? You don't even know what I got for you. You're going to leave. I'd rather serve the devil than to serve God. I just can't go through this. Yes, you can. Because God's word says I put no more on you than you can bear. That means if you're going through it, guess what? You can bear it. Man, you ain't going to bear it no way. Remember what he said? Awake, awake, and put on strength, O arms of the Lord. 
In other words, he said, you get in the presence of God and all things are possible to him that what? Believe. That's why you say, well, Lord, if you got me in this, there must be a lesson in it for me. There must be an experience in it for me. If I'm going through it, there's something in it I need to see. So what am I missing? Uh, he tweets the answer and said, there's times and there's seasons that we go through things. So you got to go back to me and please ask and see what season you in. And then if you're in that season, you say, okay, Lord, now that I'm in the season, I know I'm in the process. Now that you have me in the order cooking me, amen. Because they say, I'll put you in the fire with praise, and you're not coming out till your pure is gold. Gold is a very delicate thing. A lot of people get hard gold. When you get that 24 carat, it's soft gold. But you accidentally touch it with this, it stretches it. Because it's soft. In other words, all the impurities have been taken out of it. It's pure. Guess what Jesus is? He's pure. Guess he wants which one he wants you to be. He wants you to be sincere and pure. How does he want you to they did worship me? Must worship me. In spirit and in truth. That's as pure as you can ever get. Oh, and then accept him as Lord and Savior. When you go to him, he ain't saying, oh, you know, your flesh ain't fit right now, you need to pin. Then after you pin, we'll talk. See, this is the reason he says pray daily. Because we don't know when we see him. But if we are consistent with him, he says, I'm just. That's why we have an advocate with the Father. That's why we have our Father. God says, how, how many of you, when you pray, ask for grace? How many pray for grace? Nobody. When you pray, I always say, God, thank you for grace and mercy. It is the grace and the mercy of God. Jesus, that's what Jesus paid for. He paid for grace and mercy for you. And cover me in the blood. A lot of folks don't pray for the blood. But you should pray for God to cover your whole house in the blood of Jesus. Save the not, it don't matter. Because you say God will cover them. And then he'll save them. In that wall. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, listen, it's just so we can go home. Well, we're not going to finish it. We're going to do one more verse and we're going to be done. Verse number 51 and 11, and we're going to stop after we read this one. And I'll break it down. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall what? Come back. That's what that word means. The redeemed of the Lord shall return. And then he says, there's this, and come with singing of design. And that's what he says. He says, not only are you going to come, but you're going to come with singing. Now, I said last week who Zion was. Zion is Israel, and Zion is Jerusalem. That's who Zion is. That's who, that's who Isaiah is prophesying about. He's prophesying about Israel, he's prophesying about our Jerusalem. He says that they want to return, but when they come back, they're going to come back with joy. They're going to come back singing. He says, and everlasting joy shall be upon their what? Head. So he says, now, I'm going to, I, now, now notice what it says, upon their head. So that means there's going to be a shift in their mindset that they can give that they have joy all the time. They have joy unspeakable. In other words, they're excited about what God has done and how God has restored. And as a result of that, they have joy. Look at the next verse. Upon the head. Then he says, and they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow for moaning. In other words, it says, and sorrow and moaning shall what? In other words, they won't have to worry about no more sorrow. They have to worry about no more moaning. Because the word says, in the, uh, the prophet's prophet, he says, it's going to flee away. Do you understand that when you truly get in the place of God that you should be, if somebody can die and you, you may cry, but you probably nine times out of ten won't go through a grieving process because God will immediately step in and fill you with joy. He will give you understanding as to why. He will give you understanding as to what happened and why it happened. And the reason he gives you that understanding is that you, know, you may grieve for a period. But guess what God will do? He'll say, okay, that's over now. You don't know what I'm crying. I'm not bothered about your tears. We can there do it for a night. But joy comes in the morning. That's his word. That's what right. he said. He said, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years of the man. One day. We sleep 365 days a year. God's still awoke. Some of us that don't work 24 hours straight, 36 hours straight. 
Not only that way you work that long without sleep, your body shut down even if your mind don't. Nobody say you can keep going, but I quit. You know they ain't quit. You get behind the wheel when you die. I'm gonna show you I quit real quick. As soon as you done done skill, it'll shut down. Boom. This is Apostle Barry Space. I want to take the time to thank you so much for listening to this pre-recorded message, Comfort in Zion. God will comfort you in all that you may be experiencing. He will comfort you in all that you may be going through. It's just a matter of putting your faith, your trust in him. He is your enablement. He is your strength. He will strengthen you in your weakest moment, in your weakest hour. If you will just call out unto him, just seek his face and know that he will be in the midst of whatever storm, whatever trial you may be facing. God wants to bless you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to elevate and promote you. He wants to advance you and accelerate you in his kingdom. He died and rose that you could be free in spirit, soul, mind, and body. He died. Jesus died and rose that you could be delivered. He died and rose that every yoke and every stronghold of the enemy could be broken off of your life. He died and rose that every generational curse could be broken and that you could go free and just glorify him and magnify him. For the word says, whom the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. Let us pray. Now, Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We bless you for this word. And we repent for our failure to trust you. Our failure to realize and understand, God, that you will keep us comfort in the midst of whatever we may be experiencing, in the midst of whatever we may be going through. But, Father, we put our faith from this day forth in our trust in you. We rely and we depend on you. We put our confidence totally in you. For you said in the word, trust in the Lord our God with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways to acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So, Father, we decree and we declare your word and we bind the powers of Satan. We bind the hand of the enemy, even as we repent for our failure to trust you, to put our confidence totally in you, our reliance and our assurance totally in you. We repent for our failure, God. But, Father, now we ask you to anoint us to go forth in power, to go forth in might, to go forth knowing that we have you as our comforter, knowing that you will meet all of our needs, knowing that you will strengthen us in our weakest hour, in our weakest moment. We thank you, Father, for a word that pierce our spirit, our soul, our mind, our heart, a word that will bring transformation and cause us to rely totally in you, to put our confidence in you, Father. We give you glory for it. We give you honor and we give you praise. Now we activate this word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, into every believer. In Jesus' mighty name, we shift their hearts, we shift their spirits, and we align them according and with your word, Father. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And it tells in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And just before we get off this call, I do want to take the time to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9 and 9 and 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, with the mouth confession is made and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to take this time and this opportunity to invite you to accept him. If you will say, Father, in Jesus' name, your word says that I've can, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and if I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Now, Father, I repent of all my sins, all my iniquities, all my ungodliness, and all my unholiness. And today, Father, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is your Son. I confess that he rose from the dead for my sins and for my iniquities. And I believe that Jesus is the Savior of the whole world. And today, Father, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, if you've just prayed that prayer, you've just accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and the Savior of your life. And the angels in heaven are rejoicing for one more soul that is in and in the glories of our Lord and our Savior. So we give God glory, we give him honor, and we give him praise for you accepted him as your Lord and your Savior. And I say to you, get in a Bible-believing church and allow the Lord to pull the word in your spirit that he 
may be glorified through your life. Amen. So this is Apostle Barry Spates. I want to take the time to thank you so much for watching and for listening uh, to this pre-recorded message, Comfort in Zion. God bless you, you, especially you. And until the next time, bye now.